I, like you, <clears throat> appreciated the participation in the solemn assembly. But I thought I might just give one point of doctrine and help. When we raised our hand to the square in the solemn assembly, it was not a vote. In that, we gave of ourself a private and personal commitment, even a covenant, to sustain and to uphold the laws, ordinances, and commandments, and the prophet of God. I was so appreciated to participate with you and to be able to raise my right hand to the square. My brothers and sisters, over the past few months, I've had a humbling experience which has given me the opportunity to reflect with gratitude on the gift of life. In the course of this experience, I have continually pondered my testimony of God, our Eternal Father, and His eldest Son, our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and how I gained my testimony of the Father and the Son. People all over the world of every creed and persuasion search and struggle to know who is God, what is relationship with Jesus Christ, what is our relationship with them. I know with surety that our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ live, that the Atonement is real. God the Father and Jesus Christ are distinct, separate, immortal beings. They know us as individuals, and they hear and answer our sincere prayers. The Savior testified to the inhabitants of the New World, I bear record of the Father, and the Father beareth record of me, and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. The Holy Ghost has testified to me that these things are true. I began to gain my testimony in my youth when I reflected on 13 prophetic statements called the Articles of Faith written by Joseph Smith. It was in primary that we memorized them. They described the basic beliefs of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. The first of these statements reads, We believe in God, the Eternal Father, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. Joseph Smith knew the nature of the three members of the Godhead by personal experience. As a 14-year-old boy, he wanted to know which of the many Christian churches he should join. In the Bible, in the book of James of the New Testament, he read, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Obediently, he knelt in prayer and was visited by God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. He describes them as two personages whose brightness and glory defy all description, standing above Joseph in the air. One of them spake to him, God the Father, calling him by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Since my boyhood, Joseph Smith's experience has been a guide to me and can be to all of us. The young prophet learned the truth about our Heavenly Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, because he sought to know from the Scriptures his Heavenly Father's will, and then he faithfully obeyed. This pattern was said and perfectly exemplified by the Savior as recorded in the Bible. When Jesus was a 12-year-old boy, his mother Mary and his earthly father Joseph found him teaching in the temple. Jesus asked them, Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? But Jesus was not speaking of Joseph's business. He was speaking of the business of his literal eternal Father in heaven. The manner by which God the Father introduced His Son on several occasions is significant. 
And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water and lo, a voice from the heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And again on the Mount of Transfiguration, there came a voice from a cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. When Jesus appeared on the American continent, he was introduced in the same way by his Father. Behold my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, in whom I have glorified my name. Hear ye him. And then nearly two millennia later, the same words were spoken by the young Joseph, to young Joseph Smith. This is my beloved Son, hear him. It is of spe special significance that whenever Heavenly Father wants to introduce his Son to us, he commands us to listen, to hear the words of Jesus. Who is this Jesus? He participated with his Father in the creation of the world and was responsible under the direction of his Father to create all things on the face of the earth. And worlds without number have I created. And I also created them for mine own purpose. And by my Son I created them, whom is my only begotten. Jesus Christ is the only begotten of the Father in the flesh. He is our mediator with the Father. He is the Savior who laid down his life for us and pleads our cause with the Father. Therefore, we pray to Heavenly Father in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Son, is not the same being as the Father, but he is like his Father. He, too, is a glorified being of power and authority.